let me tell you where it all began. It all started back in the days of Adam and Eve with a little tiny fig leaf. <laughs> Just kidding. Today, as you can tell from the title of this video, I am going to be going over the nine top designer pieces that will never go out of style. And then I'm also going to be including a little mini history lesson about each of those pieces, how they kind of started out, how the fashion house started, how that particular piece came to be so huge today, and how the designer got their inspiration for creating these particular pieces. Now, I don't want to bore you. This isn't going to be some documentary on the History Channel, but I personally love hearing about the history of different fashion pieces especially fashion pieces that I have seen everywhere for years and years. It's fun for me to kind of see where those started. Even though I absolutely hate history, I think it's one of the most boring things ever. For some reason, history and fashion, when they coincide, I actually find it really interesting. So if you would be interested in seeing like a separate video for each piece and kind of dedicated to their history and going a little bit more in depth, let me know in the comment section down below because that is something that I would love to do for you as well. Do a little bit of research and kind of see see how these pieces came to be where they are. I am going to share a little bit of that mini history lesson with you today, but I am not going to go super in depth because that's not what I want to focus on. I want to mostly focus on sharing with you the individual pieces that you can add to your wardrobe if you so choose, or maybe you're just watching this for fun just to kind of see which pieces have been around so long and which ones will never go out of style. So regardless of why you want to watch this video, I hope that you find it interesting and let's get started. So first up, the most prominent piece that will never go out of style is the Hermes Birkin bag and this particular bag was designed and created in 1984 and it was named for Jane Birkin. The head of the fashion house was actually sitting next to her on a flight and she was talking to them about wanting a nice all other bag that she can use from day to day and so that's actually where they got the inspiration. They created it just for her. But funny story though, she actually ended up not really liking it because it was so heavy. She didn't like to carry it around with her because it's just a top handle carry bag. And if you watch my video with the 13 bags that I refused to buy, I actually added the Birkin bag in there because of this very thing. It is just a top handle and because it's all leather, it is super duper heavy and that is why she didn't really care for it. But I think it's really funny that the most iconic bag in the entire world that everybody highly covets she ended up not even caring for. But if you've ever read up about the Birkin bag, that is actually the number one handbag that sold the most at an auction, and it was right in the ballpark of about $250,000. So that is the most expensive handbag that has ever sold, and there are a lot of really high-profile celebrities that are known for their collections of Birkin bags. For example, like Victoria Beckham has over 100 bags, and that is just insane. I don't even have 100 regular bags. I couldn't imagine having 100 Birkin bags, but she has a pretty bomb collection. So if you're interested, you should check that out. Next up is the Chanel Classic Flap. And Coco Chanel designed the original one back in February in 1955. And if you're interested in knowing what that original one looked like, you can always go back and look at the reissues now. So they didn't continue making that exact same style of bag from then until now. They actually kind of recreated what's called the reissue. So the ones today are made to look like the ones back then, but she was the forefront leader in creating handbags. And at the time, they really only had top handle handbags. And she thought that that was kind of unfair to women to always have something in their hands and be a little bit cumbersome so that's why she created the shoulder bag and that is why the reissues today are called the 255 or 2.55 because it was created in February of 1955. Now these are the ones with what is called the Mademoiselle lock and that is just the kind of the rectangular lock with the little turn clasp. So Coco Chanel was actually not the one that created the classic CC turnstile lock that we see so famously today. That was something of Karl Lagerfeld's invention but it's just kind of interesting to see that she created one bag and then it kind of transformed over time. They kept a lot of aspects from the older style and kind of transformed it to the newer hip version that we have today. The next luxury designer piece that will never go out of style is the Louis Vuitton Speedy Classic Bag in the size 30. Now the 30 was the original one that they made and they started that back in the 1930s. So the Louis Vuitton Fashion House first started out with the luggage and that's how they made their name and then they went to a key ball which was the soft sided kind of a travel bag and the key balls were just a little bit too large for using as an everyday bag so they shrunk those down and that is where we got the Speedy and the very first one that they came out with was the Speedy 30 and Audrey Hepburn was a huge fan of this style but she wanted one that was even smaller. So in 1965 that is when they came out with the Speedy 25. And they now also have a Speedy 35 and then a 40 and then from this next size up from there you're just going into the key balls. But it's kind of interesting that the classic Speedy
Baby 30 has been around since the 30s and we're coming up on like 90 years that that one has been around and it is still going strong. People are still loving it. They did add a bandolier to it so it has changed up a little bit but for the most part it has kept its classic style and so that is one that will never go out of style. Number four on the list is the classic Burberry trench coat. So back in 1879 Thomas Burberry who obviously started the Burberry Fashion House invented what is called gabardine fabric and this fabric was really known for its wind breaking qualities. A little bit later in 1901 he designed an army officer's raincoat and lined it with this gabardine fabric so we're getting into the more functionality of what this fabric can do. Now the actual trench coat design that we see today was first created in 1912 and the trench coat as we know it today actually got its specific name because back in World War I the British troops were involved in trench warfare where they were hiding down in trenches as they were fighting and they were wearing this style of coat. So that's how it got its name for trench coat. And these coats are really big now because they are stylish for both men and women but they are also super functional because they do keep the rain off of you as well as the wind and there's a lot of other little details that are designed into the coats for more of that functionality features for water shedding and things like that that I can go into in another video if you'd like. I want to keep this one as short as possible while providing you with as much information that makes it interesting. And number five we have the Burberry scarf. So in 1967 the manager of the Burberry store in the Paris location was actually doing a window display with all of the trench coats and he was looking at it and found that all of the tan was just really boring because back then they only made the trench coats in the tan. Today they're made in all different colors, but then it was just tan. So he was looking at it like this window display has all these gorgeous trench coats, but it's just tan. How bland would that be for a window display? So what he found was to break up the monotony of the tan color, he would turn like the inside of the coat out a little bit. He would turn the whole coat inside out, but he would let that plaid peek out a little bit just to give some more visual interest to the display and the customers loved it. So from there, they actually started off creating umbrellas with that plaid design and those sold out super quick. And then from there, they put that house check onto a cashmere scarf and the rest is history. So if you think back to the 70s style, you're gonna be thinking of like the bell bottoms and then the big chunky platform heels. And so Manolo Blahnik actually came in with these sleek stiletto pumps and that completely transformed that era in fashion because everybody else was going with all of the big chunky platforms and then he slides in with his cute little stilettos and everybody started loving that because it was totally different than what they had before. And then another one of his pumps is super famous and that's the Hangisi style. And you probably recognize this one because Carrie Bradshaw made this one really big from Sex and the City. And and this seventh timeless designer piece that will never go out of style is going to be a Christian Louboutin heel. Now there isn't one single style of heel from his that has been around since the very beginning. Obviously the Pagals and the Silkates are super popular right now. But back in 1991, he opened up his first shoe salon and the Princess Caroline of Monaco was his first customer. And so she loved the heels and she started wearing them everywhere. And that's kind of what helped build his name and credibility. And everybody else saw her wearing them. So they went to wear them as well. But what you may not know is that is not when he added the red bottom. Before 1993, the bottoms were just plain brown leather as you see on a lot of the shoes today. But in 1993, he was trying to make them a little bit more interesting because he would sketch all of these beautiful designs out on paper. But when they became the 3D version of the shoe, they were super lackluster and it wasn't giving the oomph for the pizzazz that he was going for from his initial 2D design. And so one day his assistant was actually painting her nails with a red color so he grabbed the bottle and started painting the bottom of the shoe and that is how that color became his signature and such a huge fashion icon and for number eight we have the Rolex watch so back in 1910 the founder really strove to create a watch with top quality movement he went on to win the Swiss certificate of chronometric precision and that's what he built his brand upon top quality watches that have smooth precise movements so if you're looking for a watch that is one of the top best qualities in the entire world look no further than a Rolex. And finally number nine. Now this one wouldn't necessarily be considered a super luxury item because it's not super duper expensive but it is definitely a fashion staple piece that has been around forever and that is going to be the Ray-Ban Aviator sunglasses. The Ray-Ban company was actually founded back in 1937 and they got their name because their sunglasses actually ban rays from the sun. Who'd have thought? <laughs> so even though the name seems pretty obvious the name is super catchy and it's stuck. So this specific 
specific aviator style became really big because there was actually a need for pilots who were flying up at high altitudes. They would be wearing goggles before because they needed something to help block the sun. But when they were flying up at those high altitudes, the goggles would fog up and it would be really difficult for them to see. So with the aviators, it blocks the sun, but it also has a lot more ventilation going through so it doesn't fog up. And that is how we got the aviator style. And then Ray-Ban went on to create a lot of other popular styles. You're probably familiar with the Wayfarer sunglasses because they make a lot of top quality sunglasses that are polarized. So that is all I have for you on the top nine designer pieces that will never go out of style, as well as giving you a little bit of that history lesson. I really hope I didn't bore you, and I hope that you found this rather interesting. And if you do have any questions on any of the specific items that I talked about, or you do want to see an extended video more in-depth on one of the items, maybe the history of that piece, definitely let me know in the comment section down below, because I'd love to hear from you. And if you did like this video and you want to see more fashion-focused videos like this, just give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe subscribe button just so that way you are notified every time I make a new video which is two to three times a week and until next time thanks for stopping by. Way back. Way back.